I'm Scott Al Miller. It's the 30th of November, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today, I had to do a bunch of work for some upcoming travel that we're doing. And as we've been living outside of the country for a while, I decided it was time to reevaluate a bunch of our credit cards and, and other items that we use for payment processing of our trips, of our day-to-day -day life. And I decided that there's a bit about this that you may be missing with travel and things you need to evaluate if you're going to be traveling heavily or living abroad. So we're going to talk a little bit about what we did specifically and some general tips and tricks for credit cards when you are a traveler or more importantly, when you're an expat, right after the bump. For the last few years of living abroad, we've had probably not the best credit card strategy. And that's something that I needed to correct today. And it's worth a little bit of work if you're looking at potentially, potentially becoming a traveler, or certainly if you're looking at living abroad, you need to have a little bit of strategy about this. And in general, it is good to use credit cards strategically. Of course, we can get into all kinds of financial planning and say you shouldn't be living off of debt and things like that, but you do want to often leverage credit cards because they often give you some protections, lower some costs on things, maybe give you cash back or other benefits. And using those things strategically can be important, especially when you live abroad, because things like credit card insurance protections and the ability to just uh, not have to worry about your bank account being emptied because someone stole your credit card, things can be really important as a traveler. Of course, they're important when you live in the United States or Canada or wherever as well, but it's extra important when you're traveling because you have fewer options. I got a lot of bugs today. Uh, fewer options when you're out traveling. Now, before we go really into that, I do want to talk about bugs a little bit. I had a question asked just like two days ago, and it was, Scott, how bad are the mosquitoes in Leon specifically, the city that we're in here? And uh, in general, we don't hear too much about it. What, what, is the, what is the situation? Are they everywhere? Is there hardly anything? Is it, is it something you have to really worry about? And in general, and I talk about this some, in general, we don't have to worry about mosquitoes very much. Of course, this is Nicaragua. So they're, as a country, they're always worried about it. We're worried about chikungunya. We're worried about dengue. We're worried about malaria. We have a list of things that we worry about uh, as far as mosquitoes and, and similar uh, insects. But in general, we don't worry about it much at home on our own. You know, the country uh, fumigates and does normal things like checking stagnant water and such. You should be diligent about not encouraging mosquitoes to live on your own property, of course. But we don't generally have like screens on windows. We're outside all the time. Sometimes we use like off, but not very often. Nothing like what we experienced in uh, Granada or in uh, Texas or in New York. Any place I've ever lived has been far worse. Leon is actually really good. And when we are on the beach, there's often bugs, but not so often mosquitoes. Sometimes, of course, but not that much. Since the question was asked, I've been on the beach a couple times and it is like the most unbelievable mosquito season. And there have actually been just an overwhelming about a amount of mosquitoes out on the beach. That's Ponoloya and Las Penitas. And now here at the house since last night, suddenly there are so many mosquitoes that I can't even begin to tell you. It's some of the, the biggest swarming amounts of mosquitoes I've ever witnessed in my life. It's incredible. I was in the living room, or not, I'm sorry, the kitchen last night and just walked around slapping the walls. I killed at least 20 mosquitoes. And while I'm out here, I just rub my eye and killed one. They're, they're everywhere, but they're not biting me in such a way that they're making me really itchy, maybe a little bit, but not as much as you would think. And it's not like this huge problem, but they really are everywhere. They don't seem to be going after people as much as just hanging out on the walls or getting in my ear or whatever. But in general, we don't have very many mosquitoes. Normally, if you ask me on a normal day, 330, 350 days of the year, I'd be like, wow, there really aren't very many. There's always one or two and you just don't notice them once you're here. It's, it's quite a low volume and they don't, they don't like hurt that much. It's not like there's different types of mosquitoes and some really, you know, get itchy and really swell up and some barely affect you. And, but today, specifically when he asked the question, it is so many mosquitoes, I cannot even describe it. 
Future Scott here, just breaking in real quickly to say that absolutely today's episode is not sponsored in any way. It may seem that way because I'm talking about very specific credit cards and some flights and stuff, but we have no sponsors. However, this is a specific time. Valentina and I, Valentina, who does a lot of the editing and, and imagery and stuff for the show uh, and who has been on the show, she and I have talked about who good sponsors would be because we're, we're open to sponsorship. It's just something we've never done. And obviously, you guys who buy me a coffee, you're the real sponsors, right? You're, you're the ones that make this show possible and everyone watching the show just watching liking all those things help make this possible for real um but if we were to be sponsored some of the people we talk about today businesses that we talk about today um would be excellent uh, potential partners for the show because we want to show uh, life here in Nicaragua. We want to show travel uh, specifically throughout the region. Worldwide, I love traveling, but really I have a focus on Latin America and the immediate region and the Caribbean potentially. Um, and I think everyone that we mentioned today really fits into a, these could be great sponsors. And and Valentina and I had talked about this maybe a week ago, two weeks ago, and we kind of put together a list um, after I flew on LATAM and we're like, wow, there's a few companies that could really really make this show happen. So if any of them are watching or if any of you have connections with anyone that you think is appropriate as a sponsor, it has to be someone that wouldn't influence the content of the show. So for example, someone with a credit card or an airline we already use uh, or, or a hotel chain because we're not, we're not out showing hotels. We're not telling you about what hotels to use. So having one that sponsors our place to stay or someone who sponsors a car rental or something like that wouldn't, wouldn't change the content of the show. It would just make it easier for us to bring it to you. So I just wanted to be clear. We have no sponsorship on today's uh, episode, but we'd love some, should anyone know, someone who's looking to sponsor us. All right, let's get back to the credit card situation. So for us, when we started traveling abroad, we've always had a number of credit cards, as most Americans do. That's not a surprising thing. We're used to having backup cards and making sure we have one. So when one expires, we have a different one to use. Well, that's in you can manipulate things by switching cards at different times. Pretty much all Americans have multiple credit cards. Exceptions exist, as always, but it is the normal part of the American experience to have credit cards. And again, don't go into debt. I'm not recommending you use rollover, anything like that. Just using cards to make payments and then paying them off is the the really smart way to use credit cards. And you should always have some for emergencies. What if you had to go to a, a hospital and pay for something you just don't have access to cash right that moment? What if you need to travel somewhere and you need to buy plane tickets or something really quickly? You want access to credit. And sometimes it's for things you don't even spend. You use a credit card and then you get your, you know, then you cancel a thing, you get your money back and you just don't want to tie up your cash. You don't want anything to go wrong. So you use a credit card. Anyway, credit cards are important to uh, strategically maneuvering your personal finances. And of course, if you move everything into a credit card, you get a net 30 or roughly net 30 delay on your spending, which gives you a little bit more buying power without hitting any of the, uh, the, the interest rates or anything like that. So they can be used very important, very strategically in good ways. When we ourselves, like in our own personal anecdote, came down to Nicaragua, we were sure to have one travel card. And I'll tell you what that is, because this remains by places I've looked, like NerdWallet. They rank this the number one travel card to have. We have it, and we stand by it. We've been extremely happy with this card, and I will definitely be using it as my primary card uh, for the indefinite future, and that is the Chase Sapphire Reserve Card. Now, this is an international card that you pay for. It's about $95 per year, but you get tons of perks and a lot of protection. It's one of those cards that basically provides every, every luxury thing that's actually important that you hear about with travel cards. The Chase Reserve Card probably does those things. Things like provides you insurance on rental cars, protects you against purchases, has no foreign transaction fees, and so forth. It's a very important important card to have. And there's others like it. Uh, if you were, if you just don't like Chase or for some reason can't get it, the second option for that that most people suggest is the Capital One Venture card. Then they're really, really similar. Both of those are visas. So I'm sure both of those are fine. I don't have a Capital One, so I can't speak to it. But the Chase Sapphire has been fantastic. And everyone I know raves about it as far as cards go. So we had that, but we also then just had a standard stock everyday uh, MasterCard from Bank of America. We had a, uh, a couple like older cards that we've had the accounts for a long time. They don't have any particular travel benefits. They don't have any benefits we use at all anymore. Um, and they just weren't, they didn't make a lot of sense, but we kept them because these are accounts we've had for a long time. 
One thing that I like when traveling, just in general, or in life in general, but when traveling outside of your home country, it's important to have, again, more flexibility, more access to different resources. And one of the things I like to have is a variety of cards, not just from two different banks, but from different processing systems. And so my goal is to always have a Visa, a MasterCard, and an American Express. Having extra cards is fine. You wanna have 20 different cards, I don't, whatever. That's up to you and your credit limits and your credit rating and all that stuff, how you wanna manage it, whatever. You wanna have gas cards, fine store cards good but i'd like to have three major ones so in case of any emergency i can be like do you take this do you take this do you take this is someone down is there a problem whatever they all it gives me a lot of protections so we have traditionally had visa and mastercard but we didn't have a travel mastercard only the travel visa the chase sapphire reserve that i recommend so much so now we've had some cards expire i just did a trip to bolivia we have a bunch of travel coming up next year that i need to prepare for we think we're going to we're still in the planning stages but we're nailing it down and whether or not we were going to have these cards played in a lot of our to a lot of our travel planning and so i've been researching kind of since i was in bolivia what cards make sense partially i had a lot of time at an airport to look through a lot of things uh, and couldn't do a lot of like my normal writing and whatnot so this is something that i researched and for us, and this will be different for everybody, right? I'm not saying that these specific items are going to make sense for you, but I want to give you a little bit of my thought process as to why these made sense for me. And being here in Nicaragua, they're more likely to make some sense for you because you'll have some of the same factors for me if you're looking at coming to Nicaragua. Um, but I think my thought process is generally pretty good. So we're keeping the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Obviously, I wouldn't have this conversation if I didn't think that that was the way to go. We also, as a family, for a long time now, have been dedicated to using Hilton Hotels, and we've been Hilton Honor members for a very long time. Hilton has been a great chain for us, and one of the reasons that we like it is because they're one of the, if maybe the most, uh, available worldwide. There's basically always a Hilton wherever you want to go. That's not always the case. I do travel a lot of exotic locations and do find that there's a bit of time that I don't have access to a Hilton. But importantly, here in Nicaragua, we have two in Managua that my children like to use. So we do use them on a regular basis, even when we're not traveling abroad. When we're in the United States, we use Hilton exclusively. Uh, and when we go to a lot of other destinations, like Guatemala City, for example, there is a Hilton there. There's a Hilton in San Jose. I use those all the time. If you watch my channel, you know I was just there. Uh, there are Hiltons in Panama City that we use. So most of the major cities in this direct area, it is Hiltons that we use when we're in the big cities. So whether we're traveling a long way or just doing our regular day-to-day -day stuff, we're often at a Hilton, so we use this heavily. So for us, because we're Hilton Honors members, we use the app, we go for points, we do like all those things, and this doesn't work for everybody, but in general, becoming dedicated to a uh, hotel chain will often carry a lot of benefits for you. So it's something you should consider. I started this with a different uh, hotel group long ago when I was trying to be cheap, and it was it saved a little bit, and over time I found that they weren't really that good, and I was getting really qu low quality hotel rooms, and the savings over something better was very low until we discovered Hilton really made sense for us. They had the variety of places and variety of locations, like the variety of styles of hotels and the variety of locations that really worked for us because we're family travelers and tend to go a lot of different places. So they were a perfect fit for us and their prices really are pretty low. In fact, we ended up paying basically no more than we used to when we went to bargain places. So with the Hilton Honors system, it worked out great. Now, Hyatt is actually ranked better for how good their reward system is. The Bonvoy Marriott is supposed to be very good and there's others as well. Play around it and figure out the one that makes sense for you, what hotels you like, which price point makes sense for you, what features make sense for you. But for us, it was Hilton, right? I'm not saying Hilton's the answer for you, I'm just saying that those things exist. And if you're here in Nicaragua, you may wanna look at the Intercontinental system System, the one that has Holiday Inn, because they have those, both Intercontinentals and Holiday Inns in Managua. And Hyatt also makes sense. They have those as well. There aren't very many chains that exist here in the country. You can't go all over the country with that, but you can go to Managua and use them there. And so if you're going to be in Nicaragua, that's a consideration. Something that doesn't have uh, a hotel here at all could be a big negative compared to something else. Um, and I know a lot of our friends who live here use Hilton or Hyatt or, or Holiday Inn in the city when they just have that moment where you want an American hotel experience. Because when you live in Nicaragua and you come from the United States, yeah, it's true. Once in a while, we have that urge for a little bit of that Americanism just for a weekend or whatever. And we're planning on doing that coming up here at Christmas. The Double Tree is fantastic, has a beautiful pool. We love like everything about it, including its location. Price isn't bad. And the kids love to get to stay there just for a night or two, do a weekend in the city, go do shopping, go see the Christmas lights and that kind of stuff. So that's on our dock 
Connecticut. And a lot of times for the kids' birthdays, we go and spend a day or two in Managua at one of those hotels as well, the Hilton Princess being the other one. So it works out perfect for us and we get those points. So for us, getting a Hilton Honors American Express card means we get access to American Express, which you'll notice I didn't have previously or haven't had for a long time. Um, and American Express is one that has good international um, uh, usage. It doesn't have any international fees, foreign transaction fees, any of that stuff. So while it's not accepted broadly international, it is accepted a number of places. And when it is accepted, their system works really well. They have a very different mechanism than Visa and MasterCard. So they, they represent a, an extreme tertiary uh, credit card player, but they are a big, powerful one. They also potentially give you access to Centurion lounges, but nowhere that we travel. So that's not a benefit that makes sense for us uh, and a lot of other things. It's a very perks heavy card uh, and a good access to a system. For us, we actually stay at Hilton so much that we looked at it and they offer three different cards. One is free, one has a small annual fee, and one has a large annual fee. For us, it made sense to obviously not move up to the expensive one. That's pretty crazy. But the mid-tier one gives us all kinds of Hilton points. It gives us lots of points multipliers. It gives us um, immediately uh, free rooms and an upgrade to gold status. Normally you're a blue status if you're just a member, I believe at, at Hilton, then it goes to silver and you start getting some perks. You go to gold, you get even more perks. And then the top is like platinum or diamond. Um, and you get some pretty extreme perks and private lounges and stuff. We don't need those things. The gold is pretty nice because it gives you breakfast and more points uh, and you're more likely to get free rooms. And if you use a bunch of free rooms, you get more free rooms. Like there's all kinds of free room things things when you're really using your points with Hilton. So uh, we, we've been very happy with them over the years and we've learned how to use it a bit. So we're very knowledgeable about it. And that's a big piece to all this. Um, in addition to finding a credit card that gives you the points that you can use best, also learn how the point systems work with whatever it is you're doing, hotels, airlines, rental cars, whatever, figure out which things work for you and how to use those points in a way that are meaningful for you. And you'll get the maximum advantage if you just get those things and, and like haphazardly use them here and there, you're probably losing out on a bunch of benefits. So take a moment with any card that you have, any any program like this perks program that you have, and uh, put in a little bit of time of researching that because you'll probably find there's a lot of benefits that you're probably missing out on because you just aren't aware of them or haven't researched them or maybe they've updated and, and you didn't find out or maybe you've changed tiers in how much you spend or where you spend over time and you don't realize that you're getting access to benefits that you're not actually leveraging. So I recommend putting a little bit of effort into that. And a lot of savvy travelers do this. I, I really, I've known about it for a very long time, but watching Kara and Nate maybe say, seven, eight years ago, uh, one of the ways that they did, they became full-time travelers. And of course they did it partially by having a YouTube channel, partially by having uh, some starter money. They owned a business, like they were doing fine. Um, but they, they were able to reduce their cost of travel so significantly by doing extreme uh, point accumulation through hotel points and credit card points. Like, and they had tons of credit cards. Right? They had like a dozen credit cards or something crazy. And they would do flights just to get points because sometimes the points were better than the cost of the flight. And they would do all kinds of things to, to get upgraded to the specialty lounges and all kinds of stuff. Now they're doing a very different type of travel. It doesn't apply to normal people, but it was really interesting and I learned a lot from it. And it made me much more aware of just how much most of us give up in our points and perks programs because we're not aware of how it works. It's not something we're thinking about all the time. We're not putting in a conscious effort to research it and know exactly what to do. I encourage you to do a little bit of that. It doesn't have to be extreme. You don't have to change your lifestyle, but think about how you use cards, where your money goes, what you spend things on, maybe how you break it up between a couple different cards in order to hit different tiers of points, programs, and perks, and so forth. You may find that there's a lot of travel you can do a lot more comfortably or a lot less expensively by doing so. Even more popular than getting a hotel-based credit card is probably getting an airlines-based credit card. Now, again, this is not for everyone. If you live in a place like Central Europe and you're traveling everywhere by train or bus, that may not make any sense. You may not be getting a frequent flyer benefit out of getting points or whatever on a uh, credit card for an airlines. But for us here in Nicaragua, because we're gonna fly either out of Managua or San Jose to go almost anywhere, it can be pretty useful to have credit cards tied to an airline so you can get those bonus points. For us, and I've talked about this before, if flying out of Managua, we prefer to fly on Spirit. 
I get a lot of uh, disloyalty or <laughs> dislike of spirit from a lot of people, but I think the majority, and certainly not all, some people have talked about their bad experiences on Spirit. However, we can talk about bad experiences on just about any airline. Uh, but I've also run into people who just this past weekend we were talking and they're like, oh my gosh, I just flew Spirit. It was the best experience ever. And it was one of the funniest things said. They're like, they're such a low cost airlines. They don't care. They're like, we're a low cost airlines. We're just here to have fun and get through the night. Like it's a totally different vibe than a lot of other airlines where they're trying to be pretentious or they're trying to pretend they're fancy or whatever when they're not and customer service is terrible. Spirit is so much more of just embracing the fact that they're a low cost airlines and that yeah, things are a little bit rougher. Yeah, it's the middle of the night when you're flying. Yeah, it's the bargain flight, but they're gonna be nice people. Everyone's gonna get along and it's a good flight it can be a really good experience. There was some uh, talk of how many delays Spirit had of problems with customer service or whatever. And I wanna be really specific about this because I've done my research. So first of all, I fly a pretty good amount, not, not in the top 1% of flyers or anything, but I am a pretty decent flyer and I've done so for a very long time. And Spirit remains my all time favorite airlines flying from the United States. I know that most people prefer Delta. I've had some pretty bad experiences with Delta, but I've used them very little. So I realize that that can be very anecdotal and that might just be my experience and everyone else may be having a wonderful time with Delta and Delta is partners with my favorite airlines in South America, LATAM. So I'm kind of tied to them in that way. But my personal experiences with Delta long ago were absolutely horrific and I've never flown them again because of it. It wasn't just that they treated passengers bad. There was actually some very overt sexist behavior towards passengers that I felt was beyond reprehensible. And I've always had a problem with Delta because of that. And it was specifically flying from Panama back up to Albany uh, a number of years ago in 2015. Um, they really burned their bridges with me. But other than that, like most people report Delta is not perfect, but better than most airlines. But in recent surveys in the United States, and notably I just checked this from Forbes, Delta and Spirit rank nearly identically with Delta just the tiniest bit ahead as the two vastly leading airlines in North America for customer service. Of all airlines in the entire continent, Spirit and Delta rank completely in their own category. Third place is significant points behind them, almost three points in the ranking, while the difference between them is 0.1. They are essentially identical, and partly that can be attributed to who's flying the airlines as they have very different customer bases. So it's important to understand that when people are talking about Spirit, when, when people are like, oh, Spirit's so terrible, I can't believe you'd fly Spirit. Remember that Americans outrank it that above all other low cost carriers and only Delta and only by the tiniest margin is squeaking past it for overall customer service. It is essentially the best and it, of the ones that are well ranked, it is the only well ranked airlines that flies out of Nicaragua. So if this is where you're coming from, Spirit is your choice by far if you want customer service. So I also looked up the rankings on delayed flights because that could be a completely unrelated thing. And for delayed flights, not only is Spirit the number one airlines from that flies to and from Nicaragua for the least delays, it is also the number two airlines in North America for the least delays and number 16 best airlines for least delays worldwide. So for exactly the reasons that people often state that they wouldn't fly Spirit, if you actually check statistics, it appears that those are the reasons you would choose it, that there is no competitor for it in this market. If you've got Delta, you're flying out of Atlanta, yeah, apparently that's better. But if you're flying out of Managua, Spirit is number one and it's not even close. The fact that they are nearly the cheapest is just a nice financial bonus. So when I say I fly Spirit, I am not doing so just because they're handy and I'm not being cheap. I'm flying Spirit because they provide the better experience now, some people have mentioned that the time that they fly, which is roughly 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. for flights at least inbound to Managua, is rather inconvenient. I'll agree, that is a generally inconvenient time to fly. However, I actually like it a bit. It means I can get to the airport in Miami at about 8.30 at night, 
I can do whatever flying I need to do during the day to get to Miami. Then I can do a late night, relaxed, no big deal flight to Managua. You get off the plane at Managua, and if I want, I can have a driver or someone pick me up and go wherever I need to go. Nicaragua is not that hard to navigate at night. Or I can just walk across the street and go to the Best Western, or grab a taxi or a bus and go to the Hilton or one of the other hotels that I use in town. I'll mention Hilton because we're talking about the cards and stuff on this particular episode. I would not really use that in this instance. I would use the Best Western across the street where I don't have a frequent stay or uh, card or anything, but it's right across the street from the airport. It's a really nice hotel. My kids like staying there just because it's nice. Uh, so they enjoy that one too. But I don't find that the flight times for Spirit to actually be that big of a problem. And in many cases, I actually really like it. So sometimes that works out. It depends on uh, your mileage, right? Exactly what uh, you're looking to do. That was a pun intended situation. So that is the airlines that I choose. So because of that, because we know we're going to be flying out of Managua quite significantly, especially coming up in the near future, but over time, that is where we're going to be flying as well. It's getting dark and the bugs are getting worse, if you can believe it. But at least it's not mosquitoes. It's just things that like to buzz around your, your head. We know we have a lot of upcoming flights, and we know that Spirit is going to be our airlines of choice as long as we're flying out of Managua. The only time that we look to not take Spirit is once in a while you can get a really good deal or a really special connection on Avianca. And while we've had bad experiences on Avianca, they are a unique carrier in the region. I'm not going to completely rule them out, but I do avoid them in general because they've really, at least during COVID, they were especially poor on customer service. And I realize a lot of airlines struggled during that time. They seem to struggle more than most. Uh, so I went and did some research on credit cards available from Spirit specifically, and they just have two. They are both MasterCards. They are both international, no transaction fees, for no foreign transaction fee cards. One is free. One costs $79 a year, but free for the first year. Uh, they give you slightly different mix of how you get points and where you get those points faster. And, you know, obviously you have an annual fee. One gives you a few extra points at the end of the year, but you have to spend more money. The other you spend less and you don't get points, but you do get a uh, companion voucher. A lot of things. Very difficult to compare those two, but for us, we looked at that and we said we are definitely going to be flying Spirit. We want a MasterCard because you'll notice in my lineup, we had the Visa. I got the Amex with Hilton. Now we needed a MasterCard because the only MasterCard we have currently is a non-traveler card, meaning it doesn't have the free international uh, usage, uh, as in no foreign transaction fees, and it doesn't have any particular perks for travel. So it's been a negative for us. This one ended up being from the same bank, so it automatically added it to our account. It was super nice, easy to use. And now we have the bonus points system with Spirit. And so what that means is anytime we're flying Spirit, we can use the credit card with them and we get all these extra points on our miles. We get some automatic upgrades, like we get to board sooner and things like that. None of it's very big and you could just get the free card and do it that way. And then you'd have a, if this was not a card you're gonna use very often, you'd have a backup protected, uh, uh, no foreign transaction fee card that you could keep in your wallet just in case something went wrong with something else. But if you're gonna be using it all the time, which is fine. Maybe you want to do that. Maybe you want to pay for the uh, slightly upgraded points benefits of the paid for card, especially if you know you're going to be flying every year. It's pretty easy to make that one worth it. So for us, we decided to go that way, which is a little bit of trial and error. We may have gotten it wrong, but we've decided that we're going to be very carefully shifting all of our uh, spending over to credit cards. We're going to all foreign transaction free, fee free, it's hard to say, and we have this mix of one MasterCard, one Visa, and one American Express, so that we have the ultimate in flexibility no matter where we're going, no matter what we're doing, no matter what special benefit only comes from one card or another, we have all of that. Now, some of you may want to have a diner's club. You may want to have a second airline card. You may want to have a second hotel card. You may want a, uh, a second n normal travel card. It could be any number of things, and they all have these different benefits. And maybe you want to make a little chart. I don't think I need it because I've only got the three, but you may want to have a little chart that you carry around that says, okay, under these circumstances, use this card or this card, because this one gives me benefits on restaurants. This one gives me a benefits on flights. This one gives me a benefit on car rentals or better insurance or just whatever, better rates. This one let me carry over longer than this one. With a little bit of work, a little bit of research, you can have a pretty powerful credit card portfolio that allows you to improve your spending and get more for it, get more protections for it and have more flexibility, whether you're traveling and it's just your family vacation and it just lets you do more of a vacation, 
or if you're doing an all out, like I'm moving abroad and I'm gonna be living overseas and I want the power to just be protected and safe and, and you know maximize what I can do with my money, in both cases, a little bit of credit card research could go a long way. And I know that we all are aware of this, right? I don't think anyone's like surprised by this, but it's something that I think it's really easy to overlook. Like I have gone years and been like, you know, I, it's not gonna make that big of a difference. I'm not doing anything that like really matters. And for the most part, that's probably true, but we're switching to where it's gonna matter more. And it's exposing the fact that we've had these gaps, especially right now while I was in Bolivia on my like last day, uh, not quite, but but definitely pretty close to it my Chase Sapphire expired. Now I have replacements in the US. I'm just waiting for them to get here, which will be a few weeks, not a big deal. But I don't have them in hand yet. I don't have the new ones either. So the only cards we have access to, which we have plenty of, are ones that do have foreign transaction fees. So suddenly it's like, I don't wanna recharge my phone with it. I don't wanna do Pedito's job with it because it's gonna be a few extra dollars and that's gonna add up a lot. I don't wanna do that. It's gonna make everything much more expensive. So it changes how we spend. And it highlights that we only had one card that we could do for a lot of that stuff without those fees. It's important to have overlapping ones even for such a simple task. So that is something that we're solving with this, but I would encourage you to solve that before you start traveling, you will get a lot more mileage and have a lot more peace of mind knowing that you're getting these benefits for sure and you just have the protection of multiple cards. It's a little bit of card planning. Um, I advise a lot and, and you know, learn from my mistakes. It's something I should have done years ago and I didn't uh, and now I'm, I'm correcting that. And I may look at other cards in the future. I'm interested in a LATAM card, potentially once I start heavily traveling in South America, that could uh, be very beneficial. Turkish is an airline that I fly a lot and we'll see how our our flights change over time as we get to know this region. We've been here for uh, three years, but we're just about to start being able to drive over the border. That's gonna change our access to airports. We're gonna have easy access to Tegucigalpa, for example. And that may give us airlines that we want to use on a regular basis that we haven't thought of. So we're going to be researching more of that in the near future as well. But thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel and help me pay all these credit card bills. You can do so by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Miller. As always, tell your friends, family, anyone you know who might be interested in travel or travel advice or relocation, whatever. Just let them know about the channel. Tell them, yeah, we're here in Nicaragua, but we've been in Bolivia. We're going to be going other places. And we're talking about doing Mexico in March, which we have to do. We're going to be there for a wedding. So I'm going to be in the U.S. doing a little bit of U.S. travel. It looks like just before I do a bunch of Mexican travel, March is going to be a really big month of not where I had originally been expecting to be. And uh, we're going to be talking about more about flights and more about hotels and all those things in time. And pretty soon we're going to be going to Managua, I hope, for Christmas stuff. So stay tuned for that in a, a couple couple upcoming weeks and I've got a really bad cough so a lot of my hesitation is I'm just about to cough and I'm trying not to because if I cough I just I just keep coughing it's pretty bad anyway <laughs> tell your friends and family post on social media Facebook Reddit anything like that get the word out help people know about the show and of course go watch an extra episode this things really make a big difference and I will see all of you who live in my little GoPro box tomorrow <laughs>